Yes. Come back! Knox! <laughs> Good evening, America! Thank you for joining Cross Politic. Pastor Toby Chuck Knox is not here, but the water boy is. <laughs> and campus preacher Keith Darrell. This, this is the last week that Knox will ever leave the studio. I think. <laughs> We're going to like chain, I, him, yeah. chain him to this yeah, table. Yeah, I think... Um, uh, we, Sorry, he yeah. can't leave ever again. Hey, the Daily Wire's giving in to the gay agenda. The Blaze is giving in to the gay mm. agenda. The Fox is giving in... What? One step <laughs> ahead of them giving in to the tranny agenda. Yeah, that's so, right. So dump fake conservative outlets mm -hmm. by joining the Fight, Laugh, Feast army. Not only <laughs> will you be aiding in our fight to take down secular and legacy media, but you'll also get access to content placed in our club portal, such as past shows, all our mm -hmm. conference talks, and exclusive content for club members that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Lastly, you also get discounts for our conferences at the Fight, Laugh, Feast conference. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to be in Knoxville in October. Yeah. So if you got $10 a month, kick it over our way. You can sign up at flfnetwork.com. Mm -hmm. Guys, really, I mean, that was like stuff we were supposed to do before the show. That's what I know. Like, like, like adjust the volume, that's kind of stuff you do, like, you know, like sound check. We, we did it. We did it. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got it. Yeah. So this past uh, week, the Episcopalian Church, oh, great. which I grew up um, in. Why do we what, have to talk about this? What was going on in the pews for decades finally caught up to their resolves. Okay. So the Episcopalian oh, church, like or really, the bylaws, like, like, like the resolves, like they're literally their resolves. <laughs> I thought that was like a they're, Texas thing the, <laughs> the, or a gaybism. Their, their bylaws. And so the 80th general convention now calls for the Episcopalian church to advocate for access to gender affirming care in all forms, oh. social, medical, or any other. So gender mm, affirming yeah, care, right. not just socially, but medically. Okay. And all ages. That's horrific. As part of our baptismal call. Oh my gracious. To respect the dignity of every human being. And yeah. then it goes on to say, so that was the first resolve. The second resolve says the 80th General Convention affirms that all Episcopalians should be able to partake in gender affirming care with no restrictions on movement, autonomy, or timing. And be it a timing. So I get what, a one year old? I mean, yeah. is that what yeah, they're saying there? Yeah, they're right. baptism. I then mean. it resolved the 80th General Convention understands that the protection of religious liberty extends to all Episcopalians. Um, I guess that's becoming a um, new point at this point. What is it, Episcopalian at this point? To utilize, to aid others in procurement of or to offer gender affirming care. And then last resolve. And this 80th General Convention supports pedophilia. No, I'm sorry. Supports public policy at local, state, and national levels in all countries to support gender affirming care. Yeah. So that is Keith, the Episcopal Church. What's, 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 yeah, yeah, what's this, going this on? Is I left it. I yeah, left, oh, okay, this, right. this is why I left that. Uh, I did wash the priest's hands growing up. So I don't know if that <laughs> oh, has anything This is your fault. <laughs> yeah, so it might, I, I may have played a role. I don't know. But I don't get the what in the world is the Episcopal Church doing protecting religious liberty? Like, yeah, that's, that's kind of a state issue. Like, like here in you know Christ Church, it's not like oh we want to protect your religious liberty to go worship Baal mm -hmm. while we're doing mm -hmm. our thing. So I don't right. I don't right. even understand what the Episcopal Church is doing right. at this point. Yeah, what about gender affirming care for animals? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean they don't they don't mention animals at all. And I'm also wondering about furries are going to be on there. I know what, later. Adam, what about I mean that's the thing is and then what about what about uh, you know a uh, a minor attracted people. Meps? Maps? Hey folks, my name Maps. is Miranda. I use she, her pronouns. Ah. I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. Uh, and I want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. And most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. Mm -hmm. uh, and those assumptions create teachers. harm for an already marginalized population. You may have noticed that I'm using the term <laughs> minor attracted persons, sometimes abbreviated to MAPS, instead of the more commonly used term pedophile. And I'm doing this because the term pedophile has moved from being a diagnostic label to being a judgmental hurtful insult that we hurl at people in order to harm them or slander them. I also prefer person-first language that recognizes that mm -hmm. any label we might apply to a person is only part of who they are oh. and doesn't represent everything that they are. Pause. We oh, are pause. all... Pause. I don't have a pause. Come on. Um, so, but like, notice what, they're talking, what she says there. Uh, it's only part of what a person is. Right. But I thought it was everything. Everything. 
I think mm-hmm. if I thought if you didn't affirm someone's sexual identity, you were erasing them. You were, you, you were, you were being hateful. You were being yeah. hateful because that's their identity. But mm-hmm. she's. I mean, but notice how this works. Mm-hmm. It never starts that way. No. Yeah. It starts as though this is just part of who I am. Why do you care what we do in the bedroom? Right. It's just it's just, 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 a little it's part. just part of what we mm-hmm. do. What I am, mm-hmm. and, and it's not my whole personhood, mm-hmm. right? But that's just the camel's nose under the that's tent. Right. Okay, keep mm-hmm. going. I, is there more in here? Can, do can I have keep to, going? Is, I, it, is the I, video over at this point? I mean, sure, it's over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, gosh. <laughs> she is. Oh, pause. Man, pause. I am so done. <laughs> I, why are we watching this? <laughs> well, so you remember um, two years ago, so we actually. Other terms, we, Gabe? Pardon me? Other than pedophile, are there any other terms that you know of? There's um, e- epophile. And then there's another file <laughs> okay. in there. We, we, Keith, Keith showed me this joke. Now, this comedian gets up and starts talking about the term pedophile, and he's like, stay with me. Stay with me. R. R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and he's like, R. Kelly's and not then, a pedophile. And then he goes, he's not a pedophile because he's an epophile. <laughs> and an epophile is basically the later um, S- stages of puberty. Stages of puberty. People are attracted to people who are in later 40, stages, 50. you know, kind of thing. And and the comedian kind of goes through all these different different definitions. So he's like, well, the the the, the definition of pedophile is like really you know infant, pre, you know pre pre pubescent, yeah. uh, attracted to pre pubescent people. And the, and the comedian said, and we can't really talk about these distinctions because it makes you sound like a pedophile when you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. So, like, so bringing up the distinction is kind of a mute point, you know, because you just sound like yeah, a pedophile. Because when you even, do. even that sort of thing, minor yeah. attracted, like right. if you're a 19 year old attracted to a 17 year old, you're now minor attracted. So like yeah. even the label is suddenly a ridiculous. Right. Remember the, the foundational battle is over the dictionary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? that's right. N- this is why names matter. This mm-hmm. is why words matter. Mm-hmm. Meanings of words matter. Well, she understands that because yeah. she wants to get away from the judgmental mm-hmm. aspect right. of, oh, of what, it, what and, it means and, to be in this and world. too often Christians give into this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At the place, it's um, what did Pastor Doug say that we need to fight at the first crime scene? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like, right. Like, it, there's too often Christians, like, you know, you should have at stru- the dictionary, you should have struggled yeah. when they were pulling you into the black van, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, not not when you get to the place where they're gonna and do they're the, telling you to put the lotion on, the, you know, ne- like, the <laughs> next horrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's that's next? A, that's What's next? That movie with the guys so, in the pit. And he's so, like, speaking, no. speaking of, of lotion, um, the, CD, <laughs> the CDC actually just came out with updated guidelines on how to handle COVID. This is real. Right. This is, that's a great this, transition. This is insane. Speaking of lotion. <laughs> this, is, this is actually hilarious because this is we've been actually arguing this from jump. Schools <laughs> are among... You the know? settings that no longer the setting oh the that places no, no, no longer no, need to screen no longer need to screen uh-huh. people exposed uh-huh. but without symptoms yeah so the CDC is now recommending that you understand the risks <laughs> right of of the yeah. coronavirus different people have different risks that's right are you uh, older what year is this Do you have secondary <laughs> yeah exactly twenty twenty two so understand the risk step two take steps to protect themselves and others through vaccines therapeutics and non Pharmaceutical interventions. That's probably the first time they put this up on like their website. Vitamin C. Yeah, vitamin D. Get some. <laughs> get some. Get some sun. Receive testing and wearing a mask if they have been exposed, which doesn't work. Uh, receive testing if they are symptomatic and isolate for uh, you know five days or more if they are infected. Yeah. Wow. So this is the new CDC recommended guidelines. I believe San Diego, the school district, is still going to be requiring masks at least of la- as of last week. They're still going to be requiring masks. Uh, when school starts in in August September, but notice that no longer need to screen people exposed, but without symptoms. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is one of the things we've been saying from yeah. jump yeah. is that mm-hmm. it is unjust. It's a it's a violation of of due process to treat a mm-hmm. population as mm-hmm. infected when there's yes. no evidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two or three witnesses at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, and if you have extreme bubonic plague and it's you know, okay, there's a place for for isolating that. Mm-hmm. Um, but people with symptoms. But what we we've, we've been treated over the last couple of years as already they've tried us and convicted us yeah. of being all the healthy people infected because you yeah. might have been exposed. That's right. I mean, I mean that's that's actually a pretty significant shift Gabe. That's that's a Wow. Well, it's pretty. It's yeah. pretty funny that the fire CDC, the CDC. Yeah, well, <laughs> fire them. Well, we have all these, uh, you know, health codes, and you got the you got the Episcopalian Church going into tranny mode now. So now the Episcopalian Church is going into tranny church. mode. No, stop it. It's not. Is that you don't? Do you, do you think the Episcopalian Church is not the church anymore? No, no. no. Does, 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 they're, uh, they're anathematized. Count my baptism. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yes. yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yes. because he's, in, he's baptized in, before they went crazy. <laughs> stop. No, just just. But this is, I mean, this is like, yeah, I mean, this is not 
this is not church. This yeah, is not no, Christian not. church. This is this is what I mean. This is a synagogue of Satan. I mean, this, that's what this is. Wow. I mean, that, I mean yeah. that's what they're doing. They're yeah. talking about grooming mm-hmm. children. They're talking right. about destroying children, mm-hmm. families. I mean, this is wicked. This is yeah. demonic. Yeah. Um, well, and, and what was done in the pews is now made it right. to their bylaws. I mean, and, and I say that, and I mean at the same time, I mean, remember, like Jesus comes in the Gospels and he goes preaching through all the synagogues mm-hmm. and casting out demons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if in want, the synagogues. If you wanted to find a demon in Palestine, you went to a synagogue. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, that's, that's where he went casting out all the demons. That's right. So mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we've been here before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus does, you know, demon infested synagogues. Yeah. And with, I mean, they, but they're dead. It's dead, and it needs to be raised to life. So there's this recent video that was released. You know, every once in a while you see these videos of this guy going around or this lady going around asking questions, kind of testing how smart the population, the no, general population it's never is. how smart they are. <laughs> and, yeah, I know what but, that is. But this has to come from the church. This has to come from public schools because they've been doing all the discipling. Yeah. Well, uh, this next clip, it, it, some of it's pretty bad. <laughs> Do you know what country we gained our independence from? France? Yes. How many states make up the United States? Around how many? Thirteen. Oof. Yes. Who fought in the Civil War? As in, like, shooting range or like <laughs> fighting? <laughs> shooting range. Um, shooting range. And, uh, <laughs> wait, what you mean? The first Civil War, second, third? Well, you, know, you never know. So, like, I'll, which one are you talking about? <laughs> the Civil War. All right, you want to get technical? It <laughs> was Iraq. Just Iraq. Oh, just Iraq. Yes. <laughs> you want to get technical? You want to get, oh, you, oh, you get technical? Iraq. Oh. Where, where was the war for independence fought? What country? France. Yeah. From. No, uh, no yeah, good. No, no, no. no yeah, yeah, this, this is, I mean, no, this is a, I mean, all this is connected. I mean, yeah, I mean the the the, the Jesus, church isn't discipling. Jesus said that the church is the light of the world, mm-hmm. salt of the earth. Mm-hmm. If the salt loses its savor, uh, mm-hmm. you know it has no. It has, it's good for nothing. It's it's thrown out. Um, if the light goes out, if the light is is under a bushel, then you can't see. You can't mm-hmm. see where you're going. You can't see what you're doing. Um, and and that's um that's what we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the church has failed to disciple the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, that might be considered Christian nationalism by some people, but whatever, <laughs> yeah. um, we were supposed to disciple this nation. And w- and what we have is a church that's actually leading the way in perversion. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've said this on the show before, but, the, um, you know, long before Episcopalians were saying abominations like this, mm-hmm. of course, they had denied um, God's word when it came to the authority, uh, you know, what is a man? What is a woman? Right. Um, who, who is, um, who's the pastor? Who's the pastor? Yep. Who is, um, authorized, uh, to preach mm-hmm. and, um, and, and, and who is, whose job is it to protect the people? Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we, we had, uh, men acting like women in pulpits first, yep. and then we had real women in pulpits. And that's then right. we had men who thought they were women in pulp. I mean, right. it's, I yeah. mean that's, and that's, that's actually one of the things that led me out of the Episcopal Church. My sophomore year of high school, I sat down with the priest. We forgive you. <laughs> who was, <laughs> anyway, who was no, a guy. No. The, at this point, the guy, uh, priest was a guy. I asked him about believing the Bible. He goes, oh, well, these are just good stories. Mm-hmm. And then a year later, we had a female priest. And I remember, I didn't read much of the Bible, but I remember reading, like, they can't be preachers or yeah. uh, pastors. And I was right. just kind of like... We can't do I do this. not permit a woman to teach. Yeah. And so hmm. I, I remember just those two things were kind of like, well, I remember at first it was like, well, then I'm out of the church. Like right. if, if I, I'm going to go make my be- my own stories. Right. And then mm. by the grace of God, I kept reading the scriptures and he brought me back. But those were the two events in the Episcopal church that kind of wow. pushed me out a little bit. At when, least pursuing I mean, truth. you spent a lot of time on campuses, Keith. I mean, you're dealing with kids that, I mean, I, I mean, are, I mean, these churches, I think of, I say churches in quotes again. Um, if I think of these churches as old and dying. Yeah, they're completely. I mean, like the I mainline mean, churches have no presence on campus. You, I was going to say, like, you don't, wow. you don't, run, yeah. you're not running into kids who are like, well, I believe, you know, I'm Episcopalian and I'm strongly committed to my church's doctrine, and so I'm a liberal Christian or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you're not running into that, not at all. The, yeah. the mainline churches are dead. The main gap that you have are, is your broader evangelical churches, right. where they're just like, we just want to be loving. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't want to be judgy. Right. And th- that's actually the the kind of yeah, like uh, kind of the way in a little bit is right. is that component of mm. we don't want to be judgy. We don't want to be harsh. And right. what we we haven't really grasped right. how do we bring grace and truth to a situation? Right. Jesus came with grace and truth. How do we take up our right. cross? And if you're taking up your cross, you can. So it's things. so it starts though. I mean, but this is back to the beginning. Is we have evangelicals who want to be nice and winsome, and so but we have we have a f- frequently a failure of masculinity, mm-hmm. a, a failure of. So these are you know maybe they still technically believe that the pastors are to be men, 
but they're not allowed to act like men. Yeah. yeah. And, th- and that's the thing. That, and I think that's actually the point. I mean, your, your point about grace and truth. I mean, that's actually a particular calling of men in leadership. Yeah. To stand fast, be bold, mm-hmm. say, no, this is the line. You can't, you can't cross it. And to do it with grace. Yeah. And well, if, joy if and there's kindness. anything that the church um, has communicated about being winsome and kind and all that, nice. is that nice? Is that they're, that means that they're just on the path of going gay in 10 years. Yeah. I mean, right. that, yeah, apart from the grace of God, that's exactly right. And every church that kind of has argued that, the Episcopalian church, the Methodist church, right. I mean, they've all been kind of arguing that winsomeness right. and everything, right. and, and they're going gay. Kind of play, play the tune again when I was here a month ago, whatever, Knox asked me about this a couple of times, but I've received a handful of emails or texts from people I met in 2019, and they've been converted. And the interesting thing to me was, like, they didn't use a language, a biblical language of grace and truth. They're basically like, oh, you're just a Christian man who stood firm, yeah. and yet you were nice to us. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and yeah. so it was just like grace and truth, like right. that component. And that, believe it or not, that wins right. the day. Right. And, and the thing that people frequently don't understand is that when you stand there, people will hate you in the moment. They will mock you. Mm-hmm. They, will, they will say all kinds of evil things against you falsely, mm-hmm. just like Jesus said they would. Mm-hmm. But that it's actually that is the moment where you actually show them kindness mm-hmm. because you don't return evil for evil. Right. You, you don't yell back at them. You don't lose your temper. You don't get angry. You stand there and you calmly stand your ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's the thing that people don't know. Like it's after the collision. It's actually that's the point where you show grace. It's where you right. love. It's where you actually love your enemies. I, right. I've, I've said before on the show, I've, I've said in a number of times that um you know, Christians love to say, you know, you're supposed to love your enemies. Mm-hmm. And I say, all right, well, tell me their names. Yeah. And like, a silence, just like this. Yeah, yeah, just like and this. And, and people yeah. are like, well, you, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I try to be nice to everybody. And you're like, oh, so you're saying you don't, you, you actually don't have any enemies to love because you haven't stood for the truth in such a way to actually make enemies right. to love. That's mm-hmm. right. But that's, and that's, that's the thing is we, we, the Christian church has to recognize that that is the place where we shine. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's when you stand for the truth. It collides with unbelief, and then you stand there and you smile, and, and then when they, you know, whatever, fall down, you help them up. Yeah. Yep. And they're, they're hungry. You give them something to eat. They're thirsty. You give them something to drink. Right. And, and, and that's the place where yeah. the yep. gospel shines. And, and have the confidence that one, you, you, I, a good word was like collision. When that yeah. collision happens, the person who's coming after me the hardest, what amazes yeah. me the most, they're the ones always coming back a semester later, a <laughs> year later. And I remember a couple years ago, I was on this campus, this kid, guy just comes up and starts wailing away on me, like not... Literally, but like mm-hmm. metaphorically. And uh, I remember I kept kind of yeah. pushed him slightly. And a Christian guy was like, why would you do that to him? I was like, he'll be back. Yeah. Sure enough, a week later, yeah. he's like, I want to apologize about last week. Yeah. I went home. I read all about you. read about Whitfield. <laughs> and it was like, and it's like, and like that guy, the, the guy who passively walks by with the middle finger, right. he's not going to do anything. Right. You know yeah. I mean? But right. the guy who's in my face. And so that should right. just encourage us like, right. yes, be gracious, be kind. Because yeah. it's actually, believe it or not, yeah. something's happening right. in that person more so than the passive individuals. Right. So this past week, last thing here, um, uh, everyone's been following the whole FBI, Trump. Uh, Everybody? Everyone. I, <laughs> oh. Everyone has been tuning in across politics. Um, you all been following it, this? If okay. you could bring up right. uh, President Trump's social media post. Uh, so the FBI, or, or the DOJ, actually released the, the classified warrant um, that um, okay. uh, they used to, right. to, to go to Trump's Mar-a-Lago place. Um, and the, the judge who signed it uh, defended uh, Epstein's assistant oh gosh his pilots and i forget one other one other person were they it, looking for hunter biden's laptop not at all oh. they, they wouldn't do that bummer yeah they wouldn't do that so the, apparently there's about 20 boxes that was removed from trump's residence uh and and that the classified information included uh trump's uh release pardon of roger stone um some nuclear information supposedly some nuclear information and then some of trump's um uh, I don't know classified information regarding how he's handling uh, the president of France, oh. apparently who he didn't like, um, called him a liar and snake and all this stuff. Okay, uh, so Trump Trump actually released um, uh, this is actually deleted this this post the second post won't wasn't deleted but here's what Trump said on social media earlier on Friday he said number one it doesn't it, it, it was all declassified so he said as president he actually declassified the information he has certain authority. Do we know why it was, this was deleted? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we, I, we don't know. Okay. We we, um, we we looked into it and okay. couldn't find it. So um, it's possible. I would think maybe his, his, his lawyer. lawyers. Yeah, it's possible his lawyers <laughs> like, hey, you might want to delete that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number two, they didn't. They didn't. But we got it. That's what oh, matters, yeah, right? Yeah. There you go. Number two, they didn't need to seize anything. They could have had it any time they wanted without playing politics and breaking into Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> so the FBI <laughs> broke into Mar-a-Lago. 
uh, it was a secured storage with additional lock as per their request. That so, additional lock, I think, is the key. Yeah, yeah, when he gets off, yeah. it's because the, the additional, additional lock. lock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, we were following <laughs> protocol <laughs> yeah, is what happened. That. Second post, he said they could have had it any time they wanted. That includes long ago. All they had to do was ask. The bigger problem was that they are going to do it with the – what are they going to do with the 33 million pages of documents, many of which are classified that President Obama took Chicago. to Chicago? So Ooh. apparently – there's some, you know, he said, she said stuff about, you know, presidents taking classified information from the White House and everything. So the the, the uh, so uh, President uh, Trump did take classified information from the White House, had it in the House. Supposedly some of it or all of it was declassified. Um, I, I can't help but wonder that Trump was baiting them because apparently they had asked already. Hmm. They'd Gates, asked Gates multiple optimistic. times. Pardon me? I said Gabe's optimist at 4D chess. He's like, nah, Trump's... I know, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is it's a Kraken. Kraken. This is the Kraken they were talking this is, about. This is the Kraken. <laughs> yeah, this is the Kraken. Kraken. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't help but like, okay, why was Trump holding off on the classified information? You know, what was, what was he thinking? I, I can't help but thinking so that... So they had asked? They had asked. So okay. they had asked a couple times. Okay. They had been working with them. And it got to the point where the DOJ didn't believe him anymore, mm. and which is... You know, there's a breakdown of trust a long time ago there. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You didn't believe him the first time? And, but you, you believe him the first time and not the fourth time? Uh, and so anyways, he, he they get to this point, and, and so that's why they requested the warrant was because there's a breakdown of trust or whatever and all this. So. Speaking of breakdowns of trust, using a smartphone or computer opens the door to a host of digital temptations. In a world saturated with pornography and other harmful content, what's a Christian to do? We need to take a proactive approach welcoming transparency in our digital media choices. And Accountable to You makes that easy. We should probably tell Donald Trump about Accountable to You. <laughs> it probably They're accountab- it's that extra key. It's that <laughs> extra yeah, lock. Extra lock. Yeah. Accountability extra software lock. shares detailed activity reports from all your devices and your kids' devices in real time to the accountability partners that you choose. With accountability in place, your family can effectively guard against temptations online and live with purity and integrity and probably avoid having the FBI come to your house. <laughs> Learn more right. and try it free at accountable to you. That's the word accountable, the number two, the word you dot com slash F L F. Which they're going to be at our conference in October. So you can talk to them. Yeah, okay. accountable so, to you is going to be at our conference in October. Okay, it's time for the wrap up. Ready? Let's do it. On Friday Monday, wrap up. On Monday, we talked to Pastor Brandon Huber about how he was canceled by the National Realtors Association, or at least by the Missoula branch, mm-hmm. when somebody brought an ethics complaint against him when his church declined to participate in a community food drive that included some pro-homosexual literature. We also talked about the Gravity Reduction Act, recently passed by the... Co- I'm sorry, it's Inflation Reduction Act. And how, gravity. <laughs> and how, yeah. whatever it was, we don't think they actually reduced gravity at all. I mean, inflation. 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 Right, let me, right, let yeah, me help yeah, you yeah, there. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I know, okay. it seems like it was the same thing. On Tuesday, Gabe and Keith interviewed Paul Miller on his book, The Religion of American Greatness, and yeah. Keith repented of his Christian nationalism on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you guys remember that, right? You, know, you remember that? Yeah. Tears so, and everything. Yeah, he was crying. He went forward and everything. He Jesus a, is not king. I, um, I actually listened to half of the interview from the hallway, but you know, it just seemed like Keith and Gabe were taking care of business, and I was just going to let you guys Thank do you, it. So, yeah, Thank you, Toby. Thank you. I was yeah. like, you know, I can't stand that. He I'm said like, he's not coming in without Knox. That's, that's <laughs> what I remember. Like, I refuse <laughs> if to participate in this interview. <laughs> On Wednesday, Aaron Snell, the maestro master of the Fight Left Feast conferences, came and yes. joined us to talk about the Mar-a-Lago raid by the FBI, because we needed him. Yeah. I mean, it goes, it actually, yeah, actually, the whole, it, watch, yeah. I mean, it goes together. The whole thing is a mess, but we talked about the potent and danger of beer and psalms. Some folks want to know why we kick off our conferences with beer and psalms, and the reason is because we want to make men godly and dangerous again. Can we Amen. make hats and t-shirts that Amen. say that? Make men godly Amen. and dangerous again. Wine is dangerous, beer is dangerous, but the most potent thing you can get in most Christian churches today is Welch's grape juice once a month. Mm. And that pretty much explains why the modern church is so gay. Speaking of gay, <laughs> gay? yesterday we had Doug Main Waring. Whoa, whoa. Main Waring? Main Waring. Waring. Yeah, Main Waring. You no, kept on saying Waring, and he told you. I know, but I, I like show, to, but I like that <laughs> pronunciation better. I did. I really did. This is what Gabe does. He just yeah. says it the way he wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. We had him on to talk about the infiltration of homosexuality in the conservative movement. From Dave Rubin's, uh, you know, freezers full of breast milk, and yep. Spencer Clavin recently getting married, quote unquote, and the log cabin Republicans to Donald Trump himself and the National Conservatism mm-hmm. Conference. The elephant in the room is not Republicans, but sodomy. Doug is a Man. repentant homosexual yeah. who saw the dark and fruitless lifestyle from the inside and by God's grace came out and reconciled with his wife. Praise God. And now writes regularly to expose that movement. If you missed the show, 
Yeah. I highly recommend you check it I, out. I yeah. had several people come be like, what a great show interviewing him. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, yeah, go watch it was it. it was really good. My wrap up thought today is a quick plug actually for our Fight Laugh Feast conference. Ooh. The theme we've chosen is lies, propaganda, storytelling, and the serrated edge. We chose this topic because we believe that Christians need to do a better job seeing through the lies and propaganda yep. and false stories and mockery of pagans and liberals. But the answer is not just defensive. Too often, the best conservatives can do is whine and complain. That's right. But we want to see a new generation of Christians rise up that not only sees through the lies and propaganda, but who also see the potency of good stories and God's word. God has not left us powerless, but we frequently don't believe that his weapons are really all that powerful. Mm. But his word is full of stories and poetry and songs, and it is our sharp sword. But having marinated in his word, he has given us a rich tradition of literature and stories that are true and good and that's beautiful. Right. All the old stories have dragons and giants and princesses because that's the story of the world. Mm -hmm. We were made for adventure and combat. We were made to fight crafty dragons, to kill big thuggish giants, and to save fair maidens. Mm. We have better stories than the liberals, better songs, and those songs and stories will win if we will only read them and sing them in faith. Amen. So it's an invitation to join us in Knoxville to be better equipped to see through the lies and see the potency of God's mm -hmm. good word and all the good stories. Mm -hmm. And I think here's the thing is, you know, the church has really neglected stories. Yeah. We really have neglected the power of storytelling. But, I mean, we, we, we think, I think frequently that, you know, parents think it's a nice thing to read stories to your kids and, yeah. and it is a nice thing, but yeah. here's the thing. It's a powerful thing. Right. That's the part that we've forgotten. Right. Like, when you're reading to your kids stories about, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia, the yep. Lord of the Rings, when you're leading, when you're reading Beowulf around mm -hmm. the table in the living room late at night, they're falling asleep to great stories. That's right. You are training warriors. That's right. You're doing battle. Mm -hmm. You're telling them that God's story wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think one of the central elements, I remember when I was got into reformed theology, I remember thinking about, I don't want any stories in my preaching. Like I basically wanted a systematic theology yeah, and right. that's not where you live. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it took years for me to realize yeah. it was actually, I think maybe Doug Wilson circa 2005 had like a series of just mm -hmm. stories in the Bible. And you kind of realize. Yeah. The Bible's full of stories. It's full of stories. He didn't yeah. give us a systematic no. theology by yeah. Bob Inc. No, like I mean, that. he gave yeah. us, I mean, we have the book of Romans. Okay, uh -huh. great. Yeah. But that's one book. Uh -huh. yeah. You yeah. have the Kings and you got Chronicles and you yeah. got Samuel and, and you Genesis. got Judges and you yeah. got Genesis. Yeah. And you got Acts. I mean, you got the four Gospels. Mm -hmm. I mean, stories are potent. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they are shaping imaginations. They are shaping loves. They are shaping your faith. They are making you a mighty man, a mighty woman. And we need to recover the full orb sharp blade of God's word. We hope to see you in Knoxville. Make sure you download the app. Catch us on the app. That's probably the best place to, yeah. to catch us on. Mm -hmm. and, and join the club as Toby exhorted you at the beginning. Daily Wire is going gay. The Blaze is going gay. Not here. What else? Fox. Fox. <laughs> Not us. Episcopal Go. Church. <laughs> Knox isn't here. Go fight, laugh, and feast. When tyrants take over, what's the first thing they do? Disarm. It happened in Russia, China, Germany, and most recently, Afghanistan. Why? Because disarmed people are easier to control. And over the last century and a half, American tyrants have been carrying out a slow, methodical disarmament that no one is talking about. State education. Tyrants know that education is warfare. Our rulers have a vested interest in making you totally harmless. They've got big plans and they don't want you getting in the way. Think about it. Would you rather fight an army decked out with high-powered rifles or a bunch of dinky water pistols? They know that if you can think critically, you're a threat. At New St. Andrews College, we want to graduate men and women who are dangerous. Dangerous to the world, dangerous to the principalities and powers, dangerous to spiritual wickedness in high places. Education can either arm you or disarm you. It can make you a threat or make you a useful idiot. <laughs> So, where you get that education counts. Click the link to apply to New St. Andrews College today. Home. It's where you build your legacy. Where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared, and stories are told. We are Chris Natalie Carpenter, owners of Story Real Estate, and our team of top agents helps people find homes in Moscow, Idaho, and around the country. Have you thought about a move? Contact us to get connected with a top agent who shares your values and puts your family first. Or reach out to us about our Moscow Relocation Guide. Wherever you're looking to go, we can help you find home. 
Call us at Story Real Estate or visit us at storyrealestate.com and start building your legacy.